Find out how the incoming NAFA president, a vehicle acquisition pro, learned to address life cycle cost analysis differently at a previous NAFA INE. Well, I mean, I can I can think of, of several, but there's there's one I guess that stands out in my mind in regards to um, a, a similar um, concept to what we were just talking about. In that, um, I actually attended a class where they were talking about how to do a really good life cycle cost analysis, and it had a little bit of a different spin to it from the traditional life cycle cost analysis, and I'm. I can't remember whether it was three years ago or four years ago, but it was actually a, a very, very effective program. And, it, and what it did was is it, it made you think a little differently about how you make that evaluation or make that analysis. So it wasn't like I came back with a, with a, a chart or a spreadsheet that was dramatically different from everything I'd, anything I'd ever seen in my life, but it was more along the lines of, of kind of a, a way to analyze it, looking at it from two or three different perspectives, okay? So I'll give you an example. It, it really depends on, on the type of business that, that you have and exactly what your, at the end of the day, what your corporate philosophy is about your vehicle. So for example, there are a number of businesses out there that look at a vehicle strictly as a tool. They look at it as a tool to get a, get, to get a job done. So the core philosophy within that management team is, is that we're basically going to run this vehicle as long as we can run it, we can, we can maintain it, we can buy parts for it. We're going to do that until the day comes that it, it either breaks so badly that it can no longer be repaired or I can no longer buy parts for it. Then you have other companies which are at the opposite end of the spectrum that manage their vehicles as an asset and they manage it just like any other asset that's on their books and they try to minimize the amount of money that they invest and in, try to maximize their return on their investment. So you'll see some companies that have a very, very aggressive replacement policy and manage their life cycles very well and, and again it really just kind of goes back to what the corporate philosophy is about how they want to treat that asset. So that was really what the, was at the core of that, of that class, but it, 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 and it gave you some other little tidbits about how to, if you were going to, like in some cases, even accelerate replacement of certain types of vehicle based on what's going on in the marketplace. So in other words, if there were a shortage of vehicles and uh, of a particular type of vehicle and that, that particular vehicle had a higher return at auction that you might actually move your replacement schedule ahead, you know, six to eight months as opposed to keeping it what you had projected your original life cycle to be. So it was a pretty, pretty interesting concept.